In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the best ways I know to make filming in the outdoors very easy so you can capture moments like this. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy, and on today's video, that is what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at GoPro cameras, and I'm going to try to explain what the looping feature is on the cameras that will make filming in the outdoors, whether you're fishing, hunting, or anything for that matter, make it a lot easier to do. Simply put, looping is a way for the camera to continuously record for hours and hours and only save the last little bit of the action that you want it to save. So for instance, musky fishing, we may have hours and hours of us just casting, nothing's really happening, all of a sudden the fish hits, you get it in the net, you take care of it, measure it, pictures, release it, then you can stop your GoPro camera and from that point back a certain amount of time, it will save all that footage for you. That seems simple enough, but people still seem to have a hard time wrapping their head around exactly what that means. So today's video I am going to, with the uh, majesty of post-it notes and a sharpie, visually represent what's actually happening with those files in the camera and then we're going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you what those files are, look like and what you can do with them once you get them into your editing software. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your camera into the looping mode. Just so happens, I've got a GoPro right here. This is a Hero 7 Black. It's what I like to use for most of my cameras in the boat. All right, as you can see, down here, there's a little video camera. If we touch that, the bottom one here says looping. So now, if we hit that, if you can see it, and the camera might not focus on it, but anyway, down at the bottom here, it says 1080, 120. 1080 is the resolution, 120 is the frames per second. It says 5M right after that. That is the looping time, and W stands for wide. Uh, so now we have our camera in the looping mode in the five minute loop. There are a few different time limits for looping. Five minutes, 20 minutes, 60, 120 on a GoPro camera. The looping time, the 5, 20, 60 minutes, that is the amount of time the camera is going to save once you stop recording from that point back. And that's what we're going to explain to you is how the camera does that and how it saves those files for you. So we've got our camera here. I'll hit record. And as you can see, it starts counting up. So the screen on the front is going to be counting up until it hits the five minute mark. When it hits five minutes, it's going to stop. Don't freak out. It's still recording. As long as that little red light is flashing, the camera's recording. It just stops at either 5, 20, or 60 minutes, depending on the looping time that you have the camera set for. All right. The camera has reached the one-minute mark, as you can see there. So what's happening is, after that one minute, we have our first file saved in the camera. It's going to save them in these nice little discrete one minute chunks. All right, we've passed the two minute mark by a little bit. So what the camera has done, there's another file now. Hopefully you can read that. That's me, my terrible handwriting that says casting. So we've got two minutes of casting now. And as this records more, it's just going to keep doing that and creating discrete one minute files in the five minute loop and that's how the camera's saving them all right we are at the three minute mark a little bit past it and again the camera has saved that last minute in another small file skipping ahead we've reached the five minute mark and you can see the time has stopped counting up again no worries it's still recording because that little red light is on but here's what's happened. We've laid down five one minute chunks of video. As soon as the sixth minute gets recorded, that one goes away. And as soon as the 
seventh minute gets recorded, that one goes away, so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes sense to you about how the camera is constantly recording a one minute chunk and as it gets beyond the six minute mark, even though it's five minutes and hopefully we can explain why I'm talking about a sixth minute. As soon as it gets to the point where we want to stop the camera, and again, here it is, it's focusing on me, not the camera, it says five minutes. You could fish for two hours and it's going to say five minutes on there again, as long as this is going, you're still recording. But as soon as we stop the camera, what we've got is five full minutes and just for the explanation here, say when we stop the last, or when we hit stop, the last file is 33 seconds. So when you look at your files on the computer, you're going to have, you're always going to have at least five full minutes and then this last one that it saves is going to be anywhere between one second and 59 seconds. That way you always have at least five minutes. It's not just a five minute straight. It's at least five minutes of footage that the camera has saved from the point you stop it back in time. Let's run through this as if it was a real situation. We're filming all day. It's been a couple hours. We just have our constant casting, you know, save a minute, get rid of a minute, save a minute, get rid of a minute. So let's say a fish hits. So in this minute that the camera's recording, we get a fish strike. At the end of that minute, we get rid of one minute worth of casting. So the fish strikes, we take care of it, and maybe within the next minute, somewhere in there, net the fish, you're taking care of the fish. When that goes up, we get rid of this one. By this time, we've released the fish, got rid of this, and let's just say for the sake of argument, at 48 seconds into the camera filming the next minute, we hit stop, and this is what we're left with. We've got our five full minutes saved to the camera in six files. The first two minutes are just of us casting. The next one will have the fish strike. The next minute might have netting the fish, taking care of the fish, measuring it, releasing the fish, and then after you've gotten all cleaned up, stopping the camera. For our purposes, I'm talking about using the five minute function on the camera. I find 99% of the time you can get a fish to hit, net it, take it out, take care of it, release it, hit stop on the cameras, and be perfectly fine. In fact, in the boat, I keep the time on the locator so I can look at it. As soon as we get a fish to hit, get it in the net, I look at the time and give myself about three or four minutes to get that fish taken care of because, as you can imagine, if you forget to hit stop, this is going to keep recording on down the line and you're going to start losing these back here. So as soon as you think you have to, hit stop. There are plenty of times where maybe a fish is taking a while in the net to take care of, it's swallowed the bait, you have to cut some hooks. I'll stop the cameras because then you know everything is saved. You can start them right back up and say you're using the looping function and you're, you're asking, well, what if I hit it before five minutes? No problem. It's just going to record in these little one minute chunks. When you hit stop, that's what it will have saved. I hope this is making sense, folks. If it's, if it's not, leave some questions in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to answer them. So now what we're gonna do is get into the computer and take a look at what these files are actually going to look like for you. All right, so I've got a folder here that I'm going to open up and here are our one minute files. These MP4 files are the ones that we want to keep. These THM files or the thumbnail files, there are also ones called, let's scroll down, these LRV files, those are low resolution files and those are the files that in the GoPro app, that's how you can preview the files while your chip is still in the camera. But at this point, 
it's in the computer we don't need all those files so what I'm going to do is hit type so that blocks everything together so now we can easily go through here and highlight all those and get rid of them and then we've got all of our thumbnail files down here again we can go down and get rid of them so that all we have left are our mp4 files those are files that I just recorded previously and I just wanted to show you the extra files and that you really don't need them all you want to keep are those mp4 files so let's go in and take a look at some actual fishing footage and what I have kept on here all right so we are going to this other folder and I have here if we put it in this format we have our five one minute files and this one down at the bottom is slightly shorter and you can see all these ones up here are approximately the same size all one minute so if we actually go over here and hover over it one minute one minute till the end 48 seconds if we open these files up and we don't need to have the audio here we go so if we open these up you can see it's just me casting nothing there we can go to the next one again it's just casting this is from a Lake St. Clair trip actually and now here's where the action starts we're going along we're casting and somewhere in here a muskie decides to show up right there there he is he hits okay so this is where things start happening this is where I start thinking I've got three or four minutes to get this fish taken care of before I have to stop the camera so I don't lose anything so let's finish this up we get to the end of that captain mark is about to net the fish we have a little problem with the net but we've got the fish in the net everything's going good let's buzz through this now usually we would have this fish out of here by now but the problem I was having is the hooks were really far down in the fish's mouth you can see I'm kind of struggling with it here and still don't have the fish taken care of like I would like to have done we finally get to our last file here and we finally get this poor fish unhooked back in the net and at this point I think I've probably used up enough of my time and as you can see it stops at 48 seconds down here that was a perfect case of stopping the cameras before you get everything taken care of I have hundreds of examples of us catching the fish capturing it in the net measuring it take a picture release it stop the cameras everything is good for me five minutes works really nice because I like dealing with those one minute chunks once I get them into the editing software I'm using if you're not as confident that you can get that taken care of in that amount of time there is a 20 minute looping function on the GoPro and that will save your video in four five minute chunks and then the last one is going to do the same thing it's going to be somewhere between one second four minutes 59 seconds the 60 minute does the same thing five minute chunks but now you have 12 of them and then your last one is somewhere between one second and four minutes 59 seconds when you go to edit these and you put those files in your editing timeline they sync up perfectly and I'll show you that really quickly we'll go back in here I like using cyberlink power director we'll get this sucker opened up here and pull a couple of files in just so you can see I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff that's in there go down to let's see I want to open up this folder just so I can show you what's going on alright let's grab these two files pull it into the editing software and highlight both of them get them down into oops that one get them into the timeline so even though they are two distinct files when we put them together I'll show you here 
as the little cursor is running through the timeline, it hits that break. There's no break in the action. I hope that makes sense to everybody. I've found looping to be a very powerful tool when I am doing musky videos because, as I said, there is a lot of times when nothing is happening and you don't want to film hours and hours of nothing and you're going to fill up SD cards. You're going to need to buy extra SD cards. I typically only run a 32 or 64 gig card. That will last me all day. Even if I have a lot of things happening, it's only saving those anywhere from five to six minute chunks of video and you don't have to worry about swapping out SD cards. If you fill up an SD card <laughs> in the course of a day, you must be catching a lot of fish. So it's a good problem to have, I guess. This also ties into another subject that I've covered previously, and that is keeping the cameras running continuously all day long. Um, I'll put a little tag up top here and leave a link in the description down below about how you can power your GoPros all day long so you're not swapping out batteries. Between those two things, keeping your GoPro running constantly and the looping function, you're never having to swap out SD cards during the day. You're not having to swap out batteries. It makes filming a lot easier. It makes it a lot more enjoyable because it's not taking away from your fishing. All right, everybody, I hope this video was helpful to you. Again, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below be more than happy to answer them for you. And with that, I appreciate every single one of you watching, and I'll see you on the next video.